Our service at St. James is meant to be shared, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. Hi, I'm Reverend Cindy Voorhees, the priest at St. James Newport Beach. Every week we come together to worship God, where we bridge our liturgical tradition in word and sacrament with a contemporary message and creative music. And we offer relevant education programs and service projects to help you grow in your spiritual journey. We hope today's service is something you will experience personally and enjoy the love and energy of our community. If you're watching this service online, please consider a generous donation to St. James because in many ways, a virtual production costs more than a live service. We constantly invest in the latest technology to bring this quality broadcast to you. Whether live or virtual, your contribution will support our vision and make a difference in reaching more people who need our message more than ever. We have many platforms for you to choose from at the bottom of your screen or on our website at stjamesnewport.org. God bless you and thank you for joining us at St. James. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of, of the Apostles. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. reading from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we, lo that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. 
For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with the water alone, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I've called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I choose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, 
fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. Well, a little trivia about myself. I graduated from high school early, so I wandered over to the local junior college and thought I'd be a big shot and take some college courses. And so I signed up for Philosophy 101, and uh, Dr. Grimes was the teacher. And Dr. Grimes looked like an Athenian philosopher. Thought tall, thin, long beard, mustache, walked around like he knew everything. It scared the you know what out of me. And I'm in my first class with a bunch of older people, like a year older. And I thought, oh my gosh, this guy is something. And so he turns to me and he says, what do you know? And I froze. He looked at another student. What do you know? What do you know? Finally, I sheepishly raised my hand and said, that which is knowledge. Stars, the birds sang. Apparently, I had the right answer. So I thought, like, OK, I, could, I, can, I can do this, right? Well, it was the most difficult semester ever because really he kind of exploded your imagination on everything you learned in high school and the world and, of course, wonderful philosophy. So backtracking, he would talk to us about Socrates. Now, in 399 BC, before Christ, Socrates was in, like, big trouble. He was kind of exploding the world of Western philosophy. He had a following. He was kind of making us, you know, threatening the government. Remember someone we may know about 400 years later. So he was causing a ruckus in this kind of society, and he had to stand a trial. Now, one of his students, Plato, basically called it, you know, a witch hunt, which, ah, nothing new today, right? So basically, he was accused of corrupting the youth, which I love, and preaching about false gods. Now, Socrates would be famous for saying, what is a good life? Kind of like Dr. Grimes, what do you know? He would go around asking people, what's a good life? What is a good life? Very little is written by Socrates. Thankfully, Plato, his student, wrote a lot of his thoughts down and a lot of his imaginings. So upset were his students that he was put on trial for corrupting the youth that he was, Socrates was thrown in jail and his students tried to break him out of jail. And Socrates says, no, I'd rather go down for doing good than being broken free and corrupting what I believe. So the students couldn't believe it. And of course, Socrates drinks hemlock on a forced suicide and goes down in history as someone who no one could corrupt. Now, Plato goes farther and he starts dialogue, he do these kind of mock dialogues to kind of you know, pull out more of the thought and then had his own thoughts. And in one of the writings, he has a dialogue between his contemporary philosophers and Socrates. And the contemporary philosophers can't believe that Socrates is saying, I'll go down being a good person rather than corrupt myself. 
And his contemporaries are basically saying, well, wait, you could have all this wealth, you could be a great military officer, you could be a great politician, you could be a tradesman, and you can get all these riches, but you're saying you would rather die an honorable death than do all this. You could even possibly you know, corrupt your family, you could do all this, and basically Plato is saying, yes, I would rather die doing good. So we fast forward to Jesus in our gospel message this morning, and we kind of have a, you know, a situation like a Netflix series where you have a flashback. So Jesus is talking to his disciples pre-crucifixion. So you always, you know, on Netflix, oh, like three days ago, and they have this kind of scenario. Well, we're kind of going back pre-crucifixion. He's teaching his disciples, basically, I've taught you what I can teach you. And basically, he's facing the cross, very similar situation, and he's trying to download everything he can to his disciples before he goes. And basic thing is love one another as I've loved you. Now, this is part of the scenario where we kind of go, let's talk about love, and you should love your neighbor as yourself. And you know, this love, 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 all the, the things that you, know, you want to hear in a sermon that you've heard a hundred times and you walk out the door and you go, yeah, love, I'll try. I want to make a point this morning that's a little different. We have Socrates saying he's going to lay down his life for a good life, for being true and ethical and moral. Jesus' woe takes it a lot farther and say, lay down your life for your friend. Now, with Memorial Day coming up, what greater love is that someone has for their country to lay down their life for you? Generally, someone in the military is called. They feel called to their country to do that. But what about us in the pew? Not all of us are called by God to lay down our life. But what if we lay down our life for our friend? Let's say your friend needs a kidney. Let's say your friend needs an errand, run that they can't run. Or you see them buckling under the pressure of taking care of a loved one. Can you lay down your life and take care of that person for a day? Jesus is commanding us to think beyond ourselves this morning. To think in terms of how can you lay down your life for someone else. Some are literally called to that, and some are called metaphorically to that. In a world where there's war and turmoil and migration issues, where people are worried about the election year, about trials, tribulations, about earthquakes and floods, it's hard in our digital world where we're constantly checking our phone to think in terms of, oh, how can I go out today and lay down my life? But we must. We must find time during our day to stop and meditate on the gift Jesus gave us of going to the cross sacrificing his life, being called to a higher power, and saying, I can do this for you, you can do this for others. But the end result for Jesus is even further giving us the gift of eternal life. Now what Jesus is trying to do this morning in our scripture is make it so that as we breathe, as easy it is for our breath, we should be thinking in terms of going outside these doors and thinking of what can I do today to lay down my life for this world? Because you know what, people? You aren't of this world. Through the waters of baptism, you rose again in Christ, in the life of Christ and his commandments to lay down your life for others. It is a sacrificial life. And I'll be the first one to tell you, it's not easy. But you know what gets easier is the more you do it, 
the more you leave behind the noise of this world. You take the long view. You realize that we're fellow travelers during this period of time. And that these wars, yes, they're horrible. The politics, the noise we hear in social media, all that starts kind of dropping away and you try to find solutions, how your acts of kindness and laying down your life may just stop a war, may just you know, meet someone that has a key player in our world to make a difference. It doesn't have to be just you, but when you lay down your life, you find fellow travelers willing to go to the mat for what is right and to have a kingdom of God here on earth. This morning, I would just encourage you to wait and watch for those opportunities where you can really be an influencer, to be someone kind, to be in the grocery store, to push someone's cart, to lay down your time for someone else on the journey, to not be so wrapped up up here, but to start operating here as Christ. I would just encourage you this morning to love one another as Christ loved you, to take the long view that you have eternal life, that you can be the change makers in our society. Yes, we're supposed to love one another, but it's far more deeper. Jesus took it to the ultimate, to the death. Socrates asked, what is a good life now, but was willing to die for not being corrupted. We need to be willing to die, basically, I think, to ourselves. Amen. Please stand to affirm our faith found on page eight. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who is created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate Christ's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us continue in the Easter season celebrations as we offer our prayers to the risen one, responding to each petition saying, hear us, O risen Christ. We pray for the church universal throughout the world, the Episcopal Church, the Diocese of Los Angeles, and all of us here at St. James the Great, who give so freely of time and talent to make this parish an inclusive and relevant spiritual community, shining the light of Christ in all that we do. Hear us. May God's love turn the hearts of all who wage war and destruction, especially in places such as Ukraine, the Holy Land, Haiti, and Sudan. We pray also for the millions of refugees, the displaced, the asylum seekers throughout the world. Bring them to safety in welcoming countries. Hear us, O risen ones. Grant wisdom to our college campuses, navigating the complex terrain of free speech, dissent, and safety. Inspire leaders to cultivate inclusive environments where diverse perspectives thrive. 
fostering constructive dialogue and understanding. May peace prevail amidst debates and protests, uniting our communities in mutual respect and cooperation. Hear us, O risen Christ. We pray for all victims of exploitation, abuse, racism, inequity, and bullying, and for all those struggling with economic stress. May we, as a society, show our love towards our fellow citizens by finding solutions to these and other pressing issues. In this Easter season, may all those seeking wholeness be transformed and walk in the light of our risen Lord. Hear us, O oh. We pray for all those whom we cherish, but see no longer, who dwell in that place where God has provided such good things that surpass our understanding. May they be ever present with our risen Lord and all the prophets, saints, apostles, and martyrs, and who have, who have looked to him for hope in ages past. Hear us, O risen Christ. Faithful God, make our hearts bold with love for one another. Pour out your spirit upon all people so that we may live your justice and sing in praise the new song of your marvelous victory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. I think the piece is getting longer than the sermon, which is a good thing. Welcome to St. James. Welcome to our virtual congregation. I uh, want to wish a happy marathon, Cinco de Mayo, and a happy Easter to the, our Orthodox friends who today is Easter. So, lots going on today. Uh, you'll be happy to know that our hospitality team is Miguel and Araceli making homemade enchiladas. We got a whole mess Mexican fiesta in the Great Hall this morning, so please join us for that. 
Um, do we have any newcomers here this morning? If you're brave enough, raise your hand. There we go. And I know we have one over here also. And one here. There we go. Our acolytes are going to just mug you. Uh, no, no issue, right? Welcome to St. James. You've been mugged and kissed. We're glad you're here this morning. Um, if you would like more information about St. James, there's an information card in the front of the pew. Just fill that out, pop it into the offering plate, and uh, you'll be kind of on our e-blast, which we tell you about upcoming events. Do we get the gentleman back here? One more, Kevin, back here. Would you keep your hand raised? I know it's a lot to ask. But... Okay, so announcements start on page 18. If you would kindly turn to the back and... We spend a lot of time providing programs for you, and also the bulletin has lots of goodies and morsels in the back uh, to tell you what's going on. Uh, we do have a video of our bowling with the acolytes. If we could show that now. Uh, Kent, are you ready? There you go. <laughs> so sure who won that one, but it was fun. It was great fun. And I was told they want to go curling next time. Aww. Or axe throwing. <laughs> you can't hold these good people down. Um, St. James Codes is after the service today. Uh, the, uh, Steve and Barbara have an amazing curriculum, and please, if you're an adult, join in. It's an easy, fun way to learn coding. Um, you'll find the information on page 20. Welcome to Hell is our ongoing class. That's next Sunday before the service. Um, we have our Faith Lab speaker series on page 21. You'll see that uh, Ryan Steinberg will be with us at, um, let's see, I'm trying to find the page number, page 21. Anyway, uh, we only have 20 slots left. So if you're planning on coming, we're shutting this thing down for limited space. So I would advise you to uh, sign up for that. There's a sign-up sheet on the usher table, or we sent you an invitation this past week. Um, really fun. I'm actually working with them on some voice recordings, so um, if that all works, you may hear me speaking Chinese on Friday night. Okay, so uh, Map to Happy, Mental Wellness Fair, um, June 1st. Lots of planning going on for that. I would highly recommend that we stop by and support that. Uh, Rector's Reflection on June 9th. Uh, please note that, that I'll do a, a semi-annual update on the, the, um, the church and what's going on. I also wanted you to look on page 22, um, Habitat for Humanity. Is, we're going strong on that project. St. James is helming the project. Can we put it up on the big screen, no? Well, you've got it in your bulletin. 23 affordable homes on St. Michael's property. And we've decided to build a rectory um, on the church property also. So for future generations, the priests there will have a house. Um, this is all through your good, you know, giving people that this is happening. Uh, there's no other church in this diocese that is partnering with another congregation. So hats off to you. This is a big deal. It's always brought up in diocesan circles that St. James is actually helming this project. And if you would like to have more information, just feel free to send me an email. We will begin probably construction in about a year. Right now it's with the city. They've you know, pretty much approved the design process. Very big, big project for us. So thank you for your giving and supporting this and the church. God bless you as you give this morning.
I'd like to mention to you that Elena from Italy, who is one of our regular virtual watchers, has sent hosts from Lourdes. So thank you, Elena. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant was shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice and praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. James the Great and all your saints, 
we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, but thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the banquet of the Lamb. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You have been here often and you have not been here long. You have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you, the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May Almighty God who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Oh, come on. Amen. It's been a lovely service. That was not good enough. <laughs> May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Lord, Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you. Give it to me forever. Amen. Thank you. Nothing you can do that can't be done. Nothing you can sing that can't be sung. Nothing you can say, but you can learn to play the game. It's easy. All you need is love. All you need is love. Nothing can save that can't be saved. Nothing can do, but you can learn how to play the game. It's easy. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love. Nothing you can see that can't be shown. Know where you can be, but isn't where you want to be. It's easy. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. All you need is love, all together now. All you need is love, everybody. All you need is love, love. Love is all you need. Love is all you need. Love is all you need. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you. Okay.
Let us go forth in love in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. She loves you.